Here we're looking at the microscopic view of the kidney. Down here would be the medulla, and up here would be the cortex. We're going to follow two different flows. First, we're going to start with the blood flow, and then we'll follow the urine flow through the nephron. So we're coming into this medulla structure with our interlobar artery that leads to the arcuate artery, which leads to the interlobular artery. That branches off into the afferent arteriole, which goes into the glomerulus exits the glomerulus as the efferent arteriole and it branches out to become the paratubular capillaries, which are all of these that you see here, these blood vessels. That leads into the, um, our deoxygenated blood now leads into the interlobular vein, into the arcuate vein, and then to the interlobar vein. If we follow the urine flow, we would start here. So remember our glomerulus from before. Surrounding that you have the glomerular capsule, or sometimes it's called the glo uh, Bowman's capsule. Together, these two structures, the glomerulus and the glomerular capsule, can be called the renal corpuscle. Okay. Exiting the corpuscle, you have this twisty tube right here that is called the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT, that leads to the descending limb and then the ascending limb of what's called the nephron loop or the loop of Henle. So this whole thing is the nephron loop. That leads then into the distal convoluted tubule, so this twisted tube here. There are several distal convoluted tubules that all dump into the collecting duct here. Uh, and then several collecting ducts lead into or merge into the papillary duct. And the papillary duct would then lead into the renal papilla, into the minor calyx, so on and so forth.